Hey guys, you're watching Tech Edit. My name is Basil, and yesterday I got my hands on the Sony A7R5. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing talking about cameras, cameras are kind of crystal balls into the future of smartphone photography. Going into a little bit more detail on the a7R5, it's a roughly £4,000 camera, 61 megapixel full frame sensor that can capture 240 megapixel images through a cool tech that Sony has called pixel shifting. And also it's worth noting it captures 8K video too. And those aren't even the most exciting things about this camera. I'll go into more detail in a second, but before I do, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. It's how you stay on top of everything that I do and that bell for notifications. Right, back to the Sony a7R5 and its highlights can be broken down into four areas. One, that autofocus, two, the resolution and what that means for photos and videos, three, you've got that articulating display and four, everything else. Kicking off with the most exciting thing from a smartphone point of view, that autofocus. Really, autofocus, exciting? Yeah, hear me out. As smartphone sensors get bigger, up to one inch on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with that Sony sensor, autofocus on smartphones matters more. After all, they pull a shallower depth of field the larger that sensor gets. Also, shooting photos with a telephoto camera creates more blur too, and periscope cameras are only getting more powerful. So why is the a7R5 autofocus so cool? Well, it all starts with the new Bionz XR processor inside the camera. Sony showed us a demo of the processor being able to identify limbs, a torso, and the direction they're facing, as well as obviously head, eyes. And with that, it would be really handy with long distance telephoto type stuff for smartphones, so it knows not just how to focus, but also if it can detect a subject how to expose, etc. As far as eye detection goes, it's 60% more accurate than previous generation eye detection, and this thing can even detect an eye if the subject is wearing sunglasses. So it knows exactly where to focus on a face. But it wasn't the human detection that took my breath away. The animal detection really floored me. Go into the settings and you can choose between focusing on an animal's head, eyes, or body, or you can actually pick the hierarchy, the order you want to prioritize focus across all three. If that was on a smartphone, you'd be able to say goodbye to blurry pet pictures. Terry Donnelly, a photographer from here in the UK, actually had some time with the camera a week before it came out, and he brought some of the shots he took. And the eye autofocus on animals, and specifically the subject tracking, really did take my breath away. Between that 61 megapixel resolution, the degree to which the shots are croppable, and how sharp and good that red squirrel looks, it's adorable. In addition to humans and animals, the a7R5 can identify cars, trains, and planes, as well as insects. As for the hardware behind the scenes, the 693-point phase detection autofocus and 70% of the sensor is covered with points. Another aspect of the focus system that could really help smartphones is focus bracketing. Now, before I explain that, I don't know if you've got a new phone, an iPhone 14 Pro, for example, or anything with a large sensor. If you try and take a photo of a receipt or a piece of paper, use the phone like a document scanner, you may have noticed half of the shots out of focus and it's really annoying. The bigger sensors get, which is technically better, the worse they get when it comes to having half your photo in focus, half your photo out. Looks great when you're trying to take a macro shot, not so much when you're trying to scan a document. And that's where focus bracketing comes in. Focus bracketing takes shots at different focus points, and then you can stitch them together to get exactly what you want in focus without compromising and without having to defer to an ultra wide camera that's ultimately lower quality with lower dynamic range. Onto the second aspect of the a7R5 that I can't wait to see on phones, 
resolution. Now I'm not just talking about megapixels, it's a 61 megapixel sensor. We've seen 200 megapixel sensors on phones. What I'm talking about is flexibility. I love the new iPhone 14 Pro's 48 megapixel raw photos. Set your iPhone on the corner, get a group shot together, use an Apple Watch or something to take that picture and you get tons and tons of detail from that raw picture that you can then edit in Lightroom. Android phones aren't as good because they tend to shrink the pictures down in RAW. So for example, a Google Pixel 7 Pro has a 50 megapixel sensor but takes 12 megapixel RAW photos. A Xiaomi 12T Pro has a 200 megapixel sensor but takes 12 megapixel RAW photos. Really? Now I understand both manufacturers, Google and Xiaomi, probably want to save some of that storage because a 200 megapixel RAW photo would be ridiculously big but I would love some flexibility and that's exactly what the A7R5 offers. With flexible raw size selection, you can choose between a 60 megapixel, a 25 megapixel, or a 15 megapixel raw photo. So you can balance what you need, loads and loads of croppability, or just a great editable shot that gives you enough resolution to enjoy it without having to crop in too much. Also really cool, the A7R5 can take 240 megapixel photos, despite only having only a 61 megapixel pixel sensor and it does that with a tech called pixel shifting. The sensor actually slightly nudges in various directions to take 16 images, stitches them together and they create a true 240 megapixel shot for even more croppability and resolution. That would mean that a 12 megapixel, I don't know, Sony Xperia Pro I would be able to capture 48 megapixel images that are actually 48 megapixels, therefore giving you stacks of extra information. Next onto video, and yes, the camera can shoot 8K video, but that's neither here nor there. The thing that excites me is the fact that you can shift the shutter speed by increments so small that you don't actually affect the final image, but you can reduce Flickr. Sony really has thought of everything here and it's the exact kind of feature that I'd want to see on Cinema Pro or Video Pro on Sony Xperia's. My next favourite thing about the A7R5 is the articulating, tilting, tilting, articulating display. It combines the best of both worlds. Sony's old tilting displays that let you get really nice and low and Canon's articulating displays that are perfect for vloggers. So you can do selfie video really easily. It's also a touch screen, something Sony has been really miserable with in the past and it works really nicely, even including gesture controls for vloggers. There's a lot of other cool stuff in this camera too that probably won't have too much of a bearing on smartphones. For example, the mag alloy chassis has graphite heat sinks and heat dissipation, so it keeps its cool. Over 500 compressed raw photos in a burst, that's awesome. You also have five axis OIS that gives you an eight stop advantage and the thing charges via USB-C using PD power delivery. On top of that, the dual card slots can take either SD card or CF Express type A cards. And so clearly on top of being a sneak peek into the future of camera phones in certain respects, this is a mighty creator's tool as well. And we wouldn't expect anything less. The A7R5 goes on sale mid-November for, like I said, around £3,999 here in the UK. I'd love one, but I'm not ready to upgrade for my Canon EOS R6 just yet. But have you got one on pre-order? If so, let me know your your thoughts. Also let me know what you'd want to see in mobile phones of tomorrow. And if you like this video, like this channel, click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel as well, and ding that notification bell to stay on top of everything that I do. I've been Basil, you've been watching Tech Edit, have a wonderful day.